All right. Welcome. Welcome back. Welcome to the Biblos Network. Praise the Lord, everybody. We're so glad that you have taken the time to join in with us again today. We welcome you. I trust you're enjoying the blessing of the Lord. We have been busy, 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 busy here in Durham, North Carolina. There's so much to be done. It almost seems as if things are, I don't know, I mentioned it to somebody today, they, are, they seem to be speeding up. I don't know if that's because I'm getting older, and now I have a grandbaby, my children are, are grown, and, and ministry is just moving at a rapid breakneck pace, or if it's the end times, I'm not sure which one it is, but that it is hard to get a grip on the days as they slide through your fingers. So redeem the time, take advantage. Um, how many, how many holidays do you have left? How many years do you have left? How many more summer times do you have left before either the Lord returns or, or you pass away from this life? So life is precious. God is good. It is a good day to be apostolic. Uh, before we launch into today's session, take a minute, go by the merchandise store, check out what we have there. We have coffee mugs, we have sweatshirts, we have a different paraphernalia there, and we have some new stuff coming up that we hope to share with you pretty soon once we um, develop the ability to mass produce it. We have orders flying off the shelf, and our staff is hopping. Uh, they're, they're sending out orders to people and and thank you. Thank you for your, your support. Thank you for, for taking the time. Uh, we've had some great things happen here as of late. Um, I've received port reports from people all over the United States of America, all over the world, actually. Many of you have mentioned to me, I've received several reports from you folks, and, and friends of mine have told me they have people that are coming to their church because of Biblos. You know, if, if, you, if you have a friend that you don't really feel comfortable sitting down and giving them a Bible study, tell them about Biblos and give them an episode that really resonated with you or one maybe that pertains to them. You know, we cover baptism, the infilling of the Holy Ghost, the oneness of God, uh, and then other miscellaneous various Bible topics. Maybe they can hear it from someone they don't know on their phone, on their iPad, on their computer, on their laptop. Um, we are getting reports from people all the time that People are, they're watching Biblos, they're binge watching Biblos, put it on repeat, listen to it, let the word of God get down in your heart, dive deep into the great things of God and, and do the work of God. I'm speaking to the Theophili, I'm speaking to the lovers of God, the lovers of the word of God. Yeah, so friends, family, relatives, uh, co-workers, bosses, give them Biblos. I, I had a friend of mine, Brother Billy Chapman, in um, the Charlotte, Gastonia area. He told me that when he goes out of town, that he gives uh, Biblos information, uh, the links and, and whatnot, to cab drivers and Uber drivers and waitresses. It's a great way that if you don't have the time in the moment, say, you know what? Check this site out. Just go take a look at it and tell me what you think. God has great things in store for your life. It's a It's a... Uh, an inoffensive way to, to witness to somebody. So if you, if you get a little tongue tied or you don't feel confident in your ability to articulate it, let's spread the gospel. Let's get the word of God out to people. And, and there's new people that are, that are learning and they're growing. And there are saints that are being discipled because, you know, when you come into the living room and it's not Nathan Urshan's living room, it is Abraham's living room. Uh, bring them into the house of God, talk about the good things of God, and celebrate the word of the Lord. All right, so um, a few things that I want to get into today. We've had a lot of people who have, they've written to us, they have checked in with us, they're, they're sending questions. I love your questions. I love, I love when people offer their comments and they take the time. They take the time to 
share their thoughts, share their insights on things. Many of you have great insights. Many of you are really catching a hold of the things of God, and I love it. Um, I want to look at a portion of scripture here, and this is me responding to some questions that have been sent in. I, I, I get to them as best I'm able. And let me look this up. There was a man that gave a great question here. This is from one of our listeners. He said, Pastor Urshan, thank you for all that you do and, and all you're doing in Biblos. I would love to hear your thoughts on 2 Kings 5, 17 to 19. 2 Kings 5, 17 to 19. And this is 2 Kings. And Naaman said, Shall there not then, I pray thee, be given to thy servant two mules' burden of earth? For thy servant will henceforth offer neither burnt offering nor sacrifice unto other gods, but unto the Lord. In this thing the Lord pardon thy servant, servant, that when my master goeth into the house of Rimon to worship there, and he leaneth on my hand, and I bow myself in the house of Rimon, when I bow down myself in the house of Rimon, the Lord pardon thy servant in this thing. And he said unto him, Go in peace. So he departed from him a little way. So this is a a little excerpt from the story of Naaman. Naaman has just been healed of his leprosy. He has dipped seven times in the Jordan River. His leprosy departed from him. He's a Syrian general. And he offers to give Elisha money, and Elisha turns it down. He doesn't want money. He wants Naaman to know that there is a man of God in Israel, and he, God doesn't need your money. He doesn't need your finance. And, and this isn't done in a quid pro quo or even a capitalist sense, but God heals whoever he wills, whosoever will. Let him come. Later, Jesus references Naaman as one of the examples of God moving on the Gentiles as part of his kingdom mission. And so, Elisha says, no, Naaman is surprised. Gehazi actually subsequently goes out and does take money, and the leprosy that was on Naaman comes upon Gehazi. So if you've read the story of Naaman, you know this. Well, in the middle of this, there is this odd request for Naaman to take two mules and to take baskets or some kind of a conveyance, put them on the mules, and load them down with dirt Two mules burden of earth. So here they are digging up this dirt, putting it into these baskets. You got to see that. You, you got to see the servants coming out. You know, uh, Naaman had a retinue. He had a, um, a convoy of servants that were with him. One of the servants, you know, conversed with him when he got upset at Elisha. There's so much to unpack in this story. It's hard for me not to chase down all the rabbit trails. <laughs> um, you know, one of the servants said to Naaman, he said, uh, well, I guess I should back up. Naaman got angry at Elisha because Elisha didn't even come out and talk to him. He sent Gehazi out to talk to him. And, and, and it offended Naaman. Naaman is a captain of the host of Syria. He's a great man, a respected man, and he, he comes all this way to Israel, and the prophet won't even come down and talk to him. He gets angry, he gets offended, and he, he turns away to leave in a huff. He is outraged, he is insulted. And as he storms off, his servant stops him and says, Master, hold on, one moment. If this man of God had asked you to do some great thing, you would have done it. Why can't you just do the simple thing? Why can't you just go down and dip yourself into the Jordan River. The prophet said, dip seven times in the Jordan River and you'll be healed. It was too simple. There's so much to unpack from that little interaction right there. First of all, um, Naaman's response to all that was, I thought for sure he would come out and wave his hand over me. He would wave his hand over me. Isn't that just like us? Isn't that like people today? They want to show. People 
They want a production. Back then they were that way, today we are that way. Do some kind of a spooky woo-woo and, and give us some kind of a, a big theatrical moment. Wave your hand over us. You know, uh, the theatrics and, and the, the wowing and the lights and the, the, all the theatrical effects that people try to use today to impress people. Naaman was looking for it, and I submit to you people are looking for it today. Elisha refuses to stoop to that. It is simply a move of God that Naaman needs, and it, the same is true today. We simply need a move of God. We need a move of God. You need a move of God. Your family needs a move of God. I need that. This is what mankind needs. So the servant says, if... If he had asked you to do some great thing, you would have done it. And Naaman realizes the, the, the ludicrous nature of his response. And he says, well, I guess it's just that simple. Just go down into the river. And he did. And because he obeyed it, on the seventh time up, he was given the skin of a baby. So my question to you today is, why not just obey the Scripture? Just obey it. Where the Scripture says to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, just obey it. Um, he did, and, and, and it becomes one of the great stories of the Bible. Well, this is all said in the context of the two mules burden of earth. What is that? What does that mean? Well, I think what it means is has to be taken in light of the fact that when the little maid in Israel told Naaman, that he needed to go to Israel. You need to leave Syria, the geography that you are currently in, and go to Israel. Oh, that my master were in Israel. There's a prophet there that could recover him from his leprosy. So there was the act of changing geographical locations. In essence, God won't do it here, but he will do it there. In Israel, the blessing is found. In, in Israel, lepers can be cleansed. In Israel, there are men of God. And, and, and the reason for not taking money uh, from Naaman was that he might know that there is a man of God in Israel. All the false prophets you've tolerated and all of the magicians and the soothsayers and the palm readers and the astrologers, none of them can recover you from your leprosy, Naaman. But there is a prophet in Israel. So go there. When he gets there, he's insulted. He doesn't want to get into the Jordan River, the muddy Jordan River. What a powerful metaphor for the obeying the gospel, going down into the water and coming up clean and new again. Romans chapter 6 says we're buried with Jesus Christ into the likeness of his death that we might also be in the likeness of his resurrection. The insult of that muddy river those of you that have been to the Jordan River, you know what I'm talking about. It's still an unimpressive river. It's like a muddy little ditch. We glorify it and make it seem like it's some big thing. It's pretty pitiful. And even today, I stood on the banks of the Jordan River and I thought, this, this is the great Jordan. This is where John the Baptist was. This is where Joshua parted uh, the waters. This is where the Levites walked over with the Ark of the Covenant and Wow, this is where Jesus baptized people, or where the disciples rather baptized people, and John the Baptist, the baptizer, baptized people. It insults Naaman, and he wants to go to Abana and to Farpar. He wants to go to other options, and someone wrote into Biblos not too long ago, and they said Abana and Farpar are foreshadowings of sprinkling and baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Why can't we baptize this way? Why can't we go to these water sources? Why can't we utilize these extracurricular methods, these extraneous methods. What a good insight. That was well said. I can't remember who told it to me, but if, if you are listening and you hear this, thank you for that. What a good insight. No, these, this river, the Jordan River, it matters. It is in Israel. Salvation is in Israel in that Old Testament context. So no, this water source is the water source that we go to. This method is what we 
what we employ. You cannot go to Syria. You cannot go to Abana. You cannot go to Farpar. You cannot sprinkle. You cannot baptize in the titles the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost because there's only one name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And that name, ladies and gentlemen, is Jesus Christ. So if you are here and you're listening to me, if you were baptized in the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, if that's what the preacher said to you, be rebaptized in the name of Jesus Christ. There is power in the name of Jesus. All right. <clears throat> Naaman does it. He's healed of his leprosy. His leprosy leaves. And I could talk about that. that. There's significance in the seven times. There's significance in the two sets of 12 stones that are in that river. Um, it's, it's literally a, a, a picture of heaven on earth of the four and 20 elders and the seven spirits that are before the throne. And, and that's what uh, heaven was like in the book of Revelation. That's what John saw. And, and Elisha was replicating that on earth, that, that two sets of 12 and those seven times dipping in the, in the water. But that's another session for another day. There's a lot of eschatological uh, information that goes along with that. But to answer the question about these two mules burden of earth, I think the key to it is that it was in Israel that all this was found. And so in Naaman's mind, the blessings are in Israel. So if, if I can't have it in Syria and I have to go to Israel, perhaps I can take Israel with me. Perhaps I can take some of this miraculous power, this dirt, this soil that I've walked upon, this blessed place, this holy land. Perhaps I can take this. Could you give me two mules burden worth of it? Perhaps I could spread it on the ground when I get home. Perhaps I could take Israel with me. Perhaps Israel could go mobile. Maybe while I'm living in Syria and I'm the house of my master's God, Rimon, while I am there, I can then go back to my place where I've spread out this earth and I can have this holy land where I'm at. Could you load it up? And so the servants gather and they, they take their spades and they fill the, the baskets and, and the mules are, are weighed down and weighted down with the two mules' burden of earth. And Naaman walks not just to Syria, but he walks into a New Testament paradigm. He walks into a sunlit, beautiful picture foreshadowing that the Gentiles would inherit the kingdom of God and that one day the kingdom of God would be mobile. And that one day you would be able to have a little Israel where you are. Israel was never supposed to remain static and in one place but it's what, as Jesus told the woman at the well in John chapter 4, he says to her, the day is coming and now is when, when not in this mountain nor in Jerusalem will men worship the Father. For God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth.